Hello everybody, Vigo Shadow here, and of course we have the 1.5 anniversary up. I did another video about that already, so this video today is all about Echoing Radiance Rose. So I'm just going to jump right into this unit and cover her right off the bat. So if you want to know anything about um, the 1.5 anniversary or any details with that, please refer to my other video because I'll have a lot more going on in that where I cover up um, pretty much every type of reward that you can get anything beyond like exchanges missions etc um, different campaigns that are going on so you can check that out but let's go ahead and check out Rose so let's just do the max stats right off the bat I always like to do that rank 16 here let's just go ahead and check out the uh, full art here the background which is awesome I like this one um, actually quite a bit you can see a little bit of the stage um, and a little bit of the audience there and a little bit of like a of a blurred background with some like spotlights and a little bit of confetti in the air or You know whatever stuff like that. I think that one. I think the art looks pretty good um, To me. I wish there was more stuff uh, like I wanted to see more of the stage and I want to see more of the audience for me personally But still good nonetheless um, Let's go ahead and check out those max stats again power to healing boost there go from healing boost to overheal not bad and then we have the grouping which we have another grouping for the idol so it's another one of those idol units which actually I do like the idol units I think they're pretty cool um, let's go ahead and check out go back to initial here and check out these skills all right so um, radiant sword dance this is the ultimate here hidden technique raises own overheal by 30% permanent so that's actually nice because Essentially, um, you know, you'll be healed. You can you can go past 30% uh, for your own heal, which uh, covers the healer a little bit more in case you're getting attacked by backline and stuff. So that's nice. Um, and you know, with the healer itself, it already has 20% overheal at max rank 16. So that's we're talking about like 50% overheal, which is pretty nice. Recovers HP of all allies by 200% of attack, which is good. So it's all allies, of course. And then further grants invincibility for five seconds if it's red elemental. Um, I'd say that's pretty good because you're getting no damage for five seconds. I could see that being a lot of good potential there. So think about like bosses right before they hit their hidden technique. If you go ahead and do this radiant sword dance and then the boss hit hits, I don't think none of your units are actually going to be receiving any type of damage for that invincibility. So that's a very, very important one if you have a full red team and then you just trigger that hidden technique and the boss does absolutely nothing. That's a really, really good feeling. I like that. It's a pretty it's a pretty good heal um, for the team. Grants invincibility, so it's uh, you're, you're able to take no damage for like five seconds. Awesome. And then overheal, of course. So yep, good 3-in-1 um, ability for an event. When it's awakened, it's looking a little bit nicer here because we have a better heal, 100% more of a heal, which is pretty nice actually. And then 20% um, more overheal, so we're looking at 70% if you have rank 16 up to max stats currently. And then the invincibility lasts for 2 seconds more. I guess it's not too much of a deal breaker for me, but I mean... Maybe, maybe actually, because you have definitely 20% more overheal, and then 100% more heal, and then 2 more seconds. So that's actually increasing every one of those by at least some value, whereas some um, some different abilities only increase like a specific one like this, like only 200 to 300, and then 2 more seconds, and then overheal stays the same. Nothing stays the same when it's awakened, so I do like that. I really do like that. Next, let's check out the skill 2. This is usually our uh, the skill 1, which is usually always a standard heal, so let's check it out. And I predicted it. HP of all allies, though. This is a standard heal, but it's not on the lowest... Um, it's not just on the ally with the lowest HP. It's 100 centimeters of that ally, so you could potentially be healing 2 units, so that's nice. That's better than just a standard heal. And of course, it's further shields damage, 100%, so we have a standard shield on there for 15 seconds if it's red elemental. So obviously, this is a t this is a type of unit where it is bound to red teams specifically. So keep that in mind, um, a lot of these are going to be running off of if it's a red elemental team. 
when it's awakened, we have 50% um, more value on the heal and the shield. So I, I guess that's pretty good. I'd say that's pretty mid, um, personally, for the awakened there. Now let's check out this because I see a shield skill and I see a passive. So I'm very curious to see. Let's see what uh, skill two is. It is a song for you, which is, <clears throat> wow. Wow. <laughs> Okay, hold up now. Uh, we got uh, raises speed of all allies by 30% for 15 seconds. Also raises the defense up by 20% for 15 seconds. And then further increases speed by 30% for 15 seconds if it's red elemental. This is a very, very, very good passive off the bat. Speed is so good. And then you're also raising defense. You're raising speed twice. Because, like I, like I said, if you're going to run this unit, you might as well have a full red team because it's fully dependent on red teams right now. So no mix and match, so that kind of sucks. But either way, you are still, even if you don't have red team, which would, you know, really suck, you're still raising the speed of all allies by 30% for 15 seconds, which is nice. So it's 60% speed for red elementals for sure, and then you're raising the de defense by 20%. This is a very, very good passive <clears throat> skill to have, or whatever they put it under. Um, I mean, it, it is skill two, I guess. Still, really good skill. Let's see what that looks like awakened here. Ooh, we have just one value change, which is more defense. It's 30% more defense, or sorry, 10% more. And then it lasts uh, a decent bit longer. So seven seconds more, uh, seven seconds more. Which I'd say that's pretty good, and I'd still, even though the values of the speed don't change, you're still getting um, more speed, or you're still getting speed for longer, seven seconds longer. I still think that counts at least somewhat to an extent. <clears throat> now let's check out the uh, special ability here, which is Echoing Radiance. Now with Echoing Radiance, um, each time a debuff is inflicted on self, which um, that's weird. So, uh, yeah, that is very weird. Um, each time a debuff is inflicted on self. So I guess if the enemy team is debuffing you, or, hold on. If you're self-inflicting, I, 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 let's just say that's the, de the debuff is, you, you know, you have the debuff on Rose. It shields damage, so it creates a 100% shield on of all allies for 15 seconds. Cooldown, 3 seconds, so you can keep getting the shield depending on if you're getting debuffed. So, essentially... It's really good because A, <clears throat> you're shielding all allies, which is always nice. If you can put a shield on everybody, that is awesome. That's like Sherry all over again. <laughs> but except, and, and this one increases the speed. So if Sherry with the SS plus magic gear is pretty good, this is gonna be really good already with the speed uh, boost like that. Obviously Sherry's a bit better. I'm not saying this is better than Sherry. Um, I mean, I'd have to compare and contrast, but that is besides the point. Um, each time a debuff, debuff is inflicted on the self, um, shield the damage by 100, and then you can cool down this by 3 seconds, which is a pretty fast cooldown. So you can get like a 200, 300, depending um, on that. But either way, um, you're canceling 3 times the debuff effect. So whatever debuffs, debuffs they are inflicting, you're going to be canceling it on these allies. But you have to get debuff, though, in order to pull this off. So it really, it's really good if you can get this executed because you're creating a shield and you're also cleansing. So let's just get this straight here because we went over all the abilities now. This um, character is able to, you know, obviously provide a big amount of overheal to herself and stay alive in the game pretty much just as good as the tank, I would say, with that much overheal. It does a better standard heal than most, and with also its shields damage too, so this this one can create shields. And then the biggest thing is it has defense and speed. 60, specifically 60% 60 speed for red teams, which is so good. Speed is so good of a stat. You're gonna definitely want that. And then of course this special ability to um, it heavily relies on you getting debuffed so hopefully you're debuffed otherwise it's not but either way like it's still good if, you, if you're not getting debuffed then your, your all your units in your party are doing pretty great because they're able to hit out more damage 
So no no debuffs, a okay. But in the event in the scenario you do get debuffed, you're canceling these debuff effects on all your allies and you're creating a shield for them if you get debuffed though. So that is actually really really good. The combo effect of course is going to stay the same. That only changes for Shadow Festival units. Um, this is just a one hit for the normal attack. <clears throat> Not bad. But yeah, let's see here. Let's just check out the link gear now. So let's just check that out. So at the start of the wave, lower your own SP boost rate by 20% permanent. So let me just tell you this right now, your own SP boost rate is bad. Lowering that is bad, so we don't like that. But, however, you're raising the damage inflicted by all allies by 50% permanent. That is nuts. This is definitely a weapon that sacrifices um, the hidden technique, but I think, here's the thing, at the end of the wave, you should be able to pull off this hidden technique regardless. It's not like you're not going to be able to pull this off. Um, you still will, but it might be a little bit later. Um, you're not necessarily getting a... So yeah, yeah, actually, you know what? You have SP boost up to 30% if it's max rank. Um, of, or actually, initially, you have 30% SP boost as a healer. So you would just be... It's not much of a huge loss, really, for this magic gear. Because essentially, it's just taking away just 20% boost rate. So you still have 10% SP boost rate, which is not bad. This is not much of a sacrifice. Obviously, you won't be able to pull off a heal probably twice, just once. And then that using that invincibility just once, but the trade-off is so well worth it. Raises damage inflicted by all allies by 50% permanent. That is nice. So you're raising the attack of your allies, you're raising the defense of your allies, you're shielding your allies, and you're also putting speed on your allies. Is there anything else I can say uh, to make this character sound even better? <laughs> Not really. This is this is a unit that's looking very 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 well put together I'm very curious to see what Alexia has in store let's just check out the awakening here so right off the bat we have that standard heal um, for at the a1 which I said this is kind of like a mid one so eh. um, we have the speed um, speed boost one that gives you seven more seconds of speed which is nice I'd say a2 is like kind of like mid to good I I think um, the A3 is the Radiant Sword Dance, which is um, more overheal, more heal, and more or invincibility. So I think that's actually a pretty good one. That's probably the best thing she has in her kit. Um, besides, besides this one, I don't think I went over this. It's it's like 50% more shield, and then it also cancels five debuffs. So that's probably her other one. That's probably good. So they tuck her um, stuff pretty far away. Of course, you can get up to A1 uh, like pretty much immediately with the event if you're grinding out of the event and the crystal is there. Um, A2 is not bad. Um, A3, like I said, A3 and A5 is pretty much where, like the best parts of her kit are like lie. Um, so I guess there's not a. I wouldn't say there's a huge emphasis on trying to get A, trying to get to A5 or A1 or A2. Like it's like it's pretty like all looking like pretty mid to me. I'd say the Awakening roadmaps, um, not the greatest, but not the worst. But a lot of her good stuff is tucked like at least at A3, so eh, kind of not good. At least for the Awakening roadmap. All right, so next question is: Should I pull for Echoing Radiance Rose? And here's my answer, right? Wait. <laughs> just wait for Alexia to come out. I'm always going to say this um, for any event, especially if I'm able to get to the banner as early as I am right now, right off the gates. Um, you're going to want to wait for Alexia. Just wait for the other units so that you can so that you can do a compare and contrast. Of course, I will be there to cover Alexia and then just tell you, uh, well, wh which one, which way do you want to go for each one of them, or which one's better if we're looking at comparisons. But if I'm just going to be honest with you, this character looks absolutely incredible as a healer. I think it automatically already outdoes um, Lambda immediately in terms of um, not just healing, but like being able to support the team by a hell of a lot more. 
Like, you are increasing defense, attack, speed, shields, canceling debuffs. If you are a you, if you are stat boosting your team, healing it and cleansing it as well and shielding it, that is nuts. This is what you want to see out of a healer. This is like one of the I'd say if I were to put it in, in like a tier list, right? If we're going from um kind of like how I used in my Bushin festival, this lines up like so you have an okay unit like at like a B tier and then I, I put like the good uh, units at like an A tier, great units at S tier, excellent or units at SS tier, and then SS plus tier is like god tier units. This specific healer, I'm telling you right now, is probably on the lines of an excellent healer. I wouldn't say it's necessarily god tier yet, I guess, but it does so much stuff for a healer that it might as well be. In terms of healers, I think it does pretty much borderline hit the god tier, if not already hits the god tier. Um, but this is an excellent unit for sure. Of course, it is an excellent unit, but I would still recommend waiting on Alexia to see what she has to offer. Because these new units, let me tell you, are getting crazy. The more and more they come out with units, the more and more it seems like they're very, very OP. And um, everybody... Everybody else is kind of getting power creeped by these um, new units, for sure. But anyway, that's all the information I have. I don't want to keep rambling on about Echoing Radiance Rose. Really good unit. Looks appealing. I like this event. I like the idols um, groupings as well. That's all the information I have. And until next time, Vigo, signing off.